Welcome to the Big Picture with Brett Craig. I'm a little under the weather today. I don't know, something's going around. Maybe it's vid 9.0 or whatever it is now. Uh, wasn't that bad actually, just uh, last night uh, just had like chills and whatever, but I seem to be doing a little better today. I don't know, I think the thing is losing its teeth if it is indeed the vid. I don't test because I'm like, well, if I knew I had a mild virus, what would I do with that information? Well, you wouldn't give the mild virus to somebody else. I guess that's true, but actually I'm not near anybody else, so I'm not worried about that. So anyway, this endless testing regime or, regi you know, where they get you in this endless testing mentality is, I think, silly. Like, oh, am I, do I have a, a virus 9.0 of COVID? Anyway, break the cycle. Anyway, but welcome to the big picture, guys. And you know what? If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, that is kind of the home of the big picture for now until one day they tell me I can't talk anymore, uh, if that ever happens. Um, maybe they won't. But, um, but that's the home of the big picture, and I would love it if you would subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. That's kind of where I'm trying to centralize the eyeballs. I'll even post my podcast there as video because I want to drive eyeballs there, even though I'm on Substack and supposedly on Rumble, although I haven't been really feeding that channel. My advice uh, given to me by a social media guru who shall remain, name, uh, remain nameless he said that you really can't avoid YouTube uh, in terms of just eyeballs and just the machine gets so much exposure, you kind of need to be there. And in his opinion, uh, censorship isn't, isn't as bad as it's been. But anyway, all right, I want to get to the topic today. The topic today is uh, <laughs> kind of rounding back to Damar Hamlin. And, and I titled the episode, Just Look Up, uh, in reference to the Don't Look Up uh, movie on Netflix with Leonardo DiCaprio, which was essentially a metaphor for a climate disaster that's impending, but nobody wants to look up and notice that a comet is inbound for Earth and going to destroy everything, which is a sort of, again, metaphor for climate change. So but my title was just look up. We want you to look up, right? And Chinese balloons, UFOs, and Damar Hamlin. And I promise you, I'm going to actually connect all the dots on these three things uh, and give you a theory on all of this. But I want to return again, and I've talked about the Damar Hamlin story a couple times, but I, I just can't let this one go. Um, it's just, uh, I find it really amazing that the Damar Hamlin story has just been sort of memory hold. Uh, that's not to say that he doesn't get brought out uh, for some con sort of controlled interviews and some few appearances and things like that. But the core question around Damar Hamlin, as we all know, is what happened? It's like if you if you had a heart attack, right? You fell over in the office tomorrow or at your house. The number one thing that you want to know more than anything is what the heck just happened, particularly if you're 24 and in the best shape of your life. And yet, and yet, we cannot get an answer. I mean, the, the team of doctors that treated him got the key to the city. Um, we, we've heard all kinds of things about Damar Hamlin. Uh, first, we were told to respect privacy and all that, which I totally understand. And, and the first thing that was important is that Damar get better, which is, you know, praise God, that is what's most important. And so I understand that. But now that the, the, the dust is settled, why can't we get answers? And why doesn't Damar Hamlin even have answers? And I want to play a clip, I think, and I'm going I'm to connect it to all these things that I'm talking about, the Chinese weather balloons, the UFOs, and this idea of uh, just look up. Look up, but not around or around you right now. That seems to be what uh, our puppet masters <laughs> and the media, establishment media, seem to want us to do, uh, is don't look around at all the craziness unfolding around you. So I want to play this clip real quick of Damar Hamlin. This is him with Michael Strahan. <laughs> so funny. I used to work out in a gym in Los Angeles and Strahan used to work out right next to him to me. He used to seem like a, seem like a really nice guy, but in any case, he's asking Damar Hamlin the question we all have. And I want you to listen to the question and listen to Damar Hamlin's answer. Let's take a listen. The question on so many minds, what caused his heart to stop beating? You're 24. Peak physical condition could run circles around me right now. <laughs> <laughs> How did doctor describe what happened to you? Um, um, that's something I want to stay away from. 
I know from my experience the NFL, they do more tests than anything. And in the course of you having your physical, did anybody ever come back with any, say you had a heart issue or anything that was abnormal? Uh, honestly, no. Um, I've always been a, a, a healthy, young, fit, energetic, uh, you know, human being, let alone mm -hmm. athlete. Um, so it, it was something that was just, that we're, we still processing and I'm still talking through with my doctors just to see what everything was. So it, it I just find that answer so disturbing from DeMar Hamlin. And by the way, this is not about pointing blame at DeMar Hamlin. I just want to make that really, really clear. I think he seems like an awesome guy. Um, but what I sense in DeMar Hamlin is a guy that I, I sense has integrity. This is, again, just my read. Has integrity and is very conflicted about what he's being asked from Michael Strahan. Uh, he's being asked what caused the heart attack. He, he either doesn't know, right, or he knows something and he doesn't feel he can say it. I, I don't know which, but I just know the answer is so unfulfilling. And he seems unfulfilled by it. He seems very conflicted in terms of the answer he's giving. And it just really struck me that here we are, I don't even know, is it a month and a half later? I don't know how long it's been, but we cannot get an answer on DeMar Hamlin. Uh, and, and his answer there is so unfulfilling. Why doesn't he know? Why doesn't Michael Strahan follow up and press? I mean, what he does go on to say, obviously, is that um, he's never had any issues with his heart before. They run batteries of tests on these athletes. And DeMar Hamlin's uh, sort of acknowledging the fact that he's, he's young, he's healthy. There's never been a problem. And, and again, of course, you guys all know where this is going, which is there was a mandated <laughs> Uh, universal jab given to the players, I believe, over the objections of the uh, of the players' union. I think it was the NFL that uh, overruled the players' union, who said that you know we don't want a mandated vax. Um, and uh, the, I think the NFL did that. My understanding is because they accepted quite a big uh, payouts from the government to pump vaccines. Uh, we should look into that more because I don't want to say that if it's not true, but I did hear that, and it tends to make sense. You know, I think most of the media, most of the corporations were incentivized or certainly very much encouraged to pump the vaccines. I think that that's not like a big, I don't think it's a big stretch to say that that happened, but that the NFL even might've received quite a bit of money to do that, I think is uh, not a stretch to say. Um, in any case, I want to connect that now to the sudden appearance of balloons over the United States from China uh, and the shooting down of, of balloons and this idea of just look up. Um, and, and, I kind of said this about that, which I think is interesting on Twitter today. And, and every so often you'll tweet something and it resonates with people. And I think it's because there's something about what you're saying on Twitter that is, is resonating. Now, you can disagree or not disagree, but I, I just put this. I said this on Twitter. The point of uh, the PSYOP bombardment, uh, UFOs, et cetera, I called it PSYOPs. We're being told to look up. Look up at these UFOs in the sky, these Chinese balloons, is to never give you time, I said on Twitter, to resolve the last deception you've been sold. And then I said, watch DeMar Hamlin's answer about the cause of his collapse. And my point here is, is that the DeMar Hamlin story is huge. It is absolutely a stunner. What we saw, we've never seen in 100 years in the NFL, right? We saw somebody at 24 in peak condition fall over. And the initial uh, diagnosis from a lot of armchair doctors was commotio cordis, corditis, I think it was how you say it, anyway, or commotio cordis. Of course, that's gone away since then because that, I don't think that that held up to scrutiny. And then we've never, ever gone back and readdressed it. Um, so into this, suddenly we are looking up in the sky at one distraction after another. Um, and I just find that timing very interesting. Like, because again, I'm not like some military expert, but I, I just think like weather balloons from China that they drift over Canada and into our airspace and get penetrate so deeply. It should trouble us that it can happen. Those things aren't exactly like fast moving. Um, if it can happen, that should trouble us. Uh, so the question becomes, is it being allowed to happen? And, and that's my other question. And, and, and who is even sending those balloons up? Let's assume it is China. And then on the heels of the balloons, now we're told there's these unidentified flying objects, uh, three of them that were shot over uh, North, North America, Yukon, I think Lake Huron, uh, and uh, over maybe Montana. I don't know. But 
and some videos have popped up on the internet of things in the sky. And then you had NORADs, like one of the military commanders, literally in a press conference, tell the reporter that we can't rule out aliens. It's like insult my intelligence, guys. Come on, man. You don't know when these balloons are coming into our airspace. Okay. First, I'm just kind of like, maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. Now there's supposedly UFOs and you can't rule out whether they're aliens. Now I did hear the press secretary for uh, the Biden administration today shoot that idea down, for lack of a better set of words, and say that it, it is an alien. But as of yesterday, it was the NORAD commander, I think it was, or one of the big military people high up in the military, <laughs> said they couldn't rule out that it was extraterrestrial. They're not ruling anything out. It's like, you know, again, like I just, it, that just seems so disingenuous. And by the way, they've never found so far, they don't have any wreckage. They have no answers. Once again, it's like distraction. And then I, I think it's kind of this process, distraction, memory hole, and we never round back to what actually we were told. And we never resolve what last um, was said to us. So that, that's why I tweeted the point of the PSYOP bombardment, UFOs, et cetera, is to never give you time to resolve the last deception you've been sold. And this has been true for everything, right? Lab leak. You know, we, we started to figure out that it most likely was a lab leak, but we've never rounded back to deal with that. The Russian hoax against Donald Trump, like him or dislike him, it was, it was concocted. It was oppo research. We know that now. It's, nobody denies it, but we never round back and never deal with it. Hayden, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop, it was Russian disinformation, remember? Well, now we know it wasn't. We, now, we know it was absolutely real. And I could just go on and on. The insurrection on the Capitol, it was a riot. Even the FBI said it wasn't an insurrection. You can look that up on the web. But we never ran back and deal with the lie that we were told. And in the case of Damar Hamlin, this is a whopper of a, of a story, but we're not dealing with it. And it even still, as you hear in Damar Hamlin's answer there, uh, he is not even able and feels, it seems like he feels incredibly conflicted in answering the question. And then there's no real follow-up from Strahan. There's no real follow-up in the media. Nobody wants to know if vaccine-induced myocarditis could have played a role in what happened to DeMar Hamlin. And then what are the implications of that? And I think it's because uh, somebody somewhere or enough people recognize that to un- do that disaster to begin to peel back that lie has got so much litigious ramifications, so much damage of trust to all institutions in America if it were to be unraveled that, that nobody even wants to begin to peel that back. But I want to go on and make another point uh, about the DeMar Hamlin thing. Uh, I do think that we're being told to look up, to not notice it, along with a million other things, right? Like some of the other things I, I mentioned, like lab leak and um, the Russian hoax, which we've just moved past, and the Hunter Biden laptop and the scam of BLM, which was never what it purported to be. Um, we just keep moving really fast into the next distraction, whether it's a war in Ukraine or Chinese weather balloons or UFOs. All right, but... Um, you might ask too, like, and I think it's worth hitting this. Like, well, so what are you saying, Brett? Are you saying that people are conspiring to do this? Possibly. I mean, I don't think the establishment media at this point ever tells the truth. I mean, even Elon Musk tweeted that the other day. He goes, at this point, I, I'm amazed that people still believe the establishment media. So I, t I tend to agree with Elon Musk on that. Like, if you're still just reading establishment media news and you just kind of nod to it, you, I think you need to put a little bit of a, a skepticism uh, back in to the picture there because it, they just lie all the time. So are they conspiring? How does that work? I don't know. They seem to work in lockstep, right? They seem to suppress stories in lockstep. They seem to surface other stories in lockstep, like UFOs being shot down. Um, not talk about other stories like a train derailment in Ohio, which actually people don't realize this. It happened 10 days ago. That thing has been belch belching, toxic smoke into the air for a long time. And we actually, uh, the authorities actually lit that on fire. The chemicals, I forget what it's called, vinyl chloride or something like that, but it's highly carcin carcinogenic. And it's been burning for a number of days and it actually happened 10 days ago, but you don't feel like the, the news is covering it. There, there's another issue going on. I'm just using this as an example. Chickens aren't laying eggs right now. And Tucker Carlson covered this recently. It's a, a pretty big story, right? If chickens aren't laying eggs in the country, what is going on? but it's a non-story that the media doesn't want to cover it. So are they conspiring? If that's the question, and my answer is possibly. I mean, I don't think it's that hard to control Reuters, AP, who are, you know, these entities control a lot of the media. Uh, I don't think it's that hard to kind of 
um, suppress and um, and sort of surface other stories should that be your your desire. But I but I also think there's another uh, grand conspirator, and I've said this to a lot of people, and I really believe this. His name's Satan, and the whole world lies in the lap of the evil one. That's what it says. And Satan and his demons, fallen angels, can and do influence us. Uh, and and I so I and what I, what I mean by that, and I want to sort of put this together, is is that even if you didn't believe that the press and everybody was uh, being in sort of getting together, a, a mass email goes out in the morning, and they all sort of suppress a story or surface a story, depending on what the objective is for the day. If the world lies in the lap of Satan, which I believe that's true, the prince of this world, the Bible calls him, then 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 there is a grand conspirator. There is a grand chess master moving things along. And you don't need uh, elites to all be in a room or, you know, get briefed in the morning with an email to all track and move the game one direction or another. And you might say, well, Brett, well, how does that happen? And I, I do want to talk about that just for one second. Uh, there's a pastor named Mike Fabara, as I encourage you to listen to him if you get a chance, but I think he addresses this issue really well. Uh, he was asked one time, uh, can demonic, uh, fallen angels. That's all demons are, right? Just fallen angels. That's all the Bible says that a third of them went with Satan, went with Lucifer, the angel of light. So he was named the most beautiful angel. And about a third of them went with Lucifer in the rebellion against God, right? I'll be higher than you, he said. And God said, no, you won't. And cast him out. And about a third of the angels went with him. And those are just, that's demons. That's all they are. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, more mystical about it than that. How do they influence us? Uh, how do angels have an influence over us? Because we know that the Bible says we're not warring against flesh and blood. We're actually in a spiritual war, and it's just as real as the material world around you. But we don't think about it much, especially in America. How do they affect us? And Mike Fabares was just saying one day, which is really interesting, that uh, a lot of people say that demons or even uh, Satan himself can't read our mind. Uh, and he challenged that notion, and I think he made a really good point, which is how do they... Uh, how is that spiritual battle playing out then? And he was saying that more than likely the spiritual battle plays out in our thought life, actually, right? Because it's generally speaking, we don't, uh, the exorcist and these weird uh, movies that center on demon possession, demon oppression, and all this kind of uh, sort of hyperbolic Hollywood stuff kind of uh, paints a picture of, uh, I don't know, supernatural events, barfing up pea soup, like in the exorcist, levitating things. And, and, and all that is not what we see. If there is a spiritual battle going on, uh, and that's what Paul, Apostle Paul says is happening, we know that uh, Jesus dealt with a spiritual battle when he was here, it's more than likely happening in our thought life. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that these demonic entities, the, these fallen angels, absolutely can read our thoughts. They actually, and not only can they read them, they can influence them, that they can suggest things and put them into your mind. I mean, and that's consistent with James, right? The book of James, half-brother of Jesus. He said that sin is first conceived in the mind, all right? So we first think about sin, and then we actually bring it forth and into our life, and then it produces death. Um, so our thought, light is a, thought life is a battleground. I have no doubt about that. And I do think that is where that spiritual battle is playing out. It's playing out in our hearts and minds. So moving on, though, from that... Um, I just think it's worth worth talking about that for a second. That so, if there is a grand conspirator, uh, I, I just put it in the uh, uh, you know on the uh, Lucifer, uh, who is the grand conspirator, the prince of this world, and I don't put it past him and his third of the angels, and we have no idea how many that is, but it could be a billion for all we know, influencing and moving events. Uh, you don't people don't have to be next to each other, talking to each other, to be tracking with each other, and to be spiritually influenced. And we are all spiritually influenced, by the way, good and bad. I think that is true. So, one of the things that I think also that I want to say about this Damar Hamlin thing, and this sort of uh, group think that's trying to get us to look up and not look at the things around us and not resolving the things that have happened around us. Another tactic to get you to do that, right? Start looking up. Don't really look at the thing around you. Is is to mix. Uh, and it's kind of a propaganda trick that I, that I do think is true. And, and I tweeted this too. I said this on Twitter uh, this morning, which I think is really true. One of the other propaganda tricks, and this is a way to get us off of Damar Hamlin. So let me read this. One of the other propaganda tricks used is to mix falsehood with truth. The real issue with Damar Hamlin was never about him being deceased and deep faked. Remember that? Because all of a sudden when this, these questions came out, the next thing you know, the conversation kind of got hijacked and it started to be about Damar Hamlin is dead. Damar Hamlin is being deep faked. 
And these conspiracy theories and discussions got more and more out of control around that DeMar is actually not, uh, he's not actually alive. I continue in the, the tweet. The bizarre NFL cameo, and what I'm talking about is when he showed up at the game in the very beginning. The bizarre NFL cameo may, in fact, have been designed to generate such theories to discredit all those who would ask questions. The real issue is, I continue, was Hamlin injured by the jab, myocarditis, thereby resulting in a cardiac arrest at 24 years old? Still no answers. So my point is, is that... <laughs> In this sort of like psyop I'm talking about, one way is just to get you to look up, right? Look up and notice Chinese weather balloons and look at UFOs. Look at dumb stuff, uh, shiny lures to get all of us goldfish looking in, in a direction and, and not noticing the shark next to us. Um, that's one tactic. But another tactic is the mixing of truth with falsehood. And what what and, and in the case of uh, Damar Hamlin, just to address that out a little bit, that whole discussion around Damar Hamlin and what happened to him on the field and the 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 possibility that it was it was induced by the jab got hijacked by this idea that he was dead and these were deep fake videos the NFL was putting out and that when he showed up in that cameo to the game that that was another proof it was so weird and if you remember it was weird i mean it was like this you know hoodie glasses it was like michael jackson you know when he was alive this is kind of how he would look when he was moving to and fro in between uh, destinations you know uh, as covertly as possible and, and as anonymously as possible. And it was a very weird appearance by DeMar Hamlin. And what I was saying there in that thing is it's possible. And I'm just saying, I'm not saying I know that this is true. It's to possible that that was designed to get the conspiracy theories going. Let's have a really strange appearance, odd cameo from DeMar Hamlin. And that allows this conspiracy sort of uh, speculation machine to ramp up. And you end up with people saying, he's being deep, deep faked. He's dead. He's not even alive which then has the, and again, then has the uh, outcome of discrediting any questions around DeMar Hamlin. And I think, in my opinion, it worked brilliantly. In my opinion, it worked brilliantly. Whether that was, again, everybody kind of trying to do that or whether under spiritual influence, uh, this was the uh, PSYOP, it, it, it feels like that conversation got hijacked. And I, I know that because even at the NFL uh, Super Bowl game just two days ago, people in the room had moved the conversation to DeMar Hamlin being dead and this whole thing that it, you know, and that became the conversation when that is not the conversation. The conversation around DeMar Hamlin, if we don't get distracted by Chinese balloons and uh, weather balloons and UFOs, the conversation around DeMar Hamlin is, was he injured by a mandated experimental jab. That's the question. And we have not resolved it. We are moving on to the next distraction. And you know what? I don't know if we'll resolve these UFOs that were shot down, right? We're going to, uh, we're never going to get an answer. I bet it's just fell into Lake Huron and fell into the Yukon. And we don't, we don't have any, uh, we don't know what the debris are. Are you telling me that NORAD and our military doesn't know what they shot down? In my opinion, they know. I think they know, but it's just a distraction and it's, they're not interested in resolving the distraction. They're only interested in the distraction. And the fact that we never double back on the distractions tells me that the goal of them is distraction, not to resolve them, not to get to the bottom of how a virus spread across the world out of a Wuhan lab funded by our own NIH lead, Dr. Fauci and EcoHealth Alliance. These are never resolved, these questions. The Hunter Biden laptop, we never resolve them. And so... And I think that the point I'm making here is, is that in addition to getting you to look up, it's these fertile fallacies. And I think that they're worth talking about just for a second. What is a fertile fallacy? Well, it's essentially just, and this is what I tweeted, it's a truth mixed with a lie, right? A, a lie, a blatant lie on its own is really not that effective, right? You kind of discount it very quickly. But what is actually powerful is when you mix truth with a lie. And I think a great example of a fertile fallacy, I go right back to the beginning and my head uh, just kind of immediately goes to the Garden of Eden. If you want to know what a fertile fallacy is and to think about how that is a much more powerful lie than just a flat out falsehood. And when you think about Eve at the tree, she is the, rece the receiver of the first fertile fallacy. And this is how Satan works. Um, and, and that is to say that he mixes truth with falsehood. He does it in your life and in my life. This is how he works. There's some truth 
to what he is saying, to that thought that's coming through your head. Uh, it, it's not all lies. That's what makes it powerful. And so at the tree, what do we see happening? Well, we see uh, Satan presenting Eve with a temptation, right, to eat from the one tree that God said, don't eat, the knowledge of good and evil. And what is the appeal from Satan? Uh, yes, the Bible says it was uh, pleasant to the eyes, uh, looked good for eating. It obviously was an attractive looking fruit. But the, but the snake, the, the Satan, what is, what is his actual real convincing appeal to, to, to Eve was um, this. He said, if you eat it, you will have knowledge of good and evil. You'll know what God knows. He doesn't want you to know what he knows. But if you were to eat this fruit, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, um, you will have the knowledge of good and evil. You will know, you will, your eyes will be opened. Well, think about that for a second. Was, was Satan lying? No, Satan, in, 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 a, in a way, he's telling Eve the truth. The truth is if you eat this fruit, you are going to have your eyes open. You are now going to know for the first time in your life the difference between good and evil. Uh, because Eve lived in a state of perfection, Adam lived, lived in a state of perfection, and the Bible's description of that is it's such a state of perfection that they don't know they're naked. So think about that. Like there's no shame. There's no sense of even my nakedness. Um, we, all, we all know we're naked, right? We, we try to shut our blinds, uh, you know, make sure nobody sees us naked. Half the time we don't even want our spouse to see us naked or anybody else. We know about our nakedness uh, before other people. And we're often, uh, with the exception of weird nudists, we don't really want to be naked in front of other people. So they didn't even know they were naked. So that's how innocent they were. They weren't aware of sin. They weren't aware of evil. And Satan here is telling Eve, there's something that you'll know that you don't know now. Something that God knows if you just take a bite of the, of the uh, tree of good and evil, just take a bite of the fruit. So the lie was not from Satan that you'll know what God knows. He was telling the truth. Satan was telling the truth. Eve would know. Adam would know. If they took a bite of the fruit, they would know the difference between good and evil. The lie was, is that God was holding it back from them, right? That there was, this knowledge would enhance their life, make life better. When in fact, the curse is what comes from eating of the fruit, from the tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil. So there's a, there's a truth mixed with a falsehood. And that is what a fertile fallacy is. And that is what I think can happen in stories like Damar Hamlin. We mix into that story something that takes us off point. Uh, soon we're not talking about a mandated vaccine that might have induced vaccine-induced myocarditis. Uh, now we are talking about um, we're talking about deep fakes and whether Damar Hamlin is alive at all. And that is a, a, a brilliant example of a fertile fallacy. Um, and so I guess just thinking about all of this. I just think, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I have never felt stronger that we are living in such a time of deception. I, I, it's just so many lies and they come so fast. And I was saying to my, to my wife this morning, it's like it's speeding up. It's speeding up because all you can do when you lie this much is double down, right? The, 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 the lies that have been told have been so painful and so damaging, particularly around the clot shot. Um, that if you were to stop and peel them back, uh, peel back the Russian hoax and recognize that there was a shadow cast over an entire presidency for four years. Now, you may agree with that. You may be glad that it happened to Trump. But now to know that it was all oppo research, I'm just using these as examples, or that the Hunter Biden laptop is not Russian disinformation, but actually a real laptop that would indicate um, some real problems for the current president of the United States uh, being bought off. I forget the actual term for that, but... Um, in any case, there's so many stories, the clot shot especially, that if you were to unravel them at this point, it, it is so painful. The implications are so vast and so big uh, as to make it almost like the only option seems to be that we ought to just keep doubling down. And so it feels like things are speeding up. Uh, it feels like the lies are coming faster and faster. Uh, and this leads us to just look up. Just look up, you know, look up at distractions, look up at the, the cultural distractions, whether they're the Super Bowl, um, whether it's a war in Ukraine, uh, it can become just can we give you the next smoke and mirrors magic show, the next grand illusion that stops you from doubling back and actually looking around 
you know, looking around next to you. You're looking up, but you really should be looking around because you're, you're swimming in lies. You're absolutely swimming in lies. And so just in, just wrapping up today, that would be my encouragement to people out there. You're not crazy. First of all, which is my old tagline from Adwoke. You're not crazy. They are that you're not crazy. You are being lied to constantly. Um, the gaslighting is off, off the chain and it's happening constantly. And I think, um, I think the only way to uh, combat it is to step back and to just be skeptical of what the establishment press tells us, uh, whether it's UFOs in the sky or some other uh, silly story, uh, and and just keep an eye, just keep some skepticism, and recognize that we are you know living in a world of lies, and we're living in a world that's lying in the lap of. The evil one and the evil one, what did Jesus say he was? What did he say he was at, at core besides a murderer? He's a murderer, but there's one other thing that he is, his father of lies. And if that's the prince of this world, then all we ever were swimming in was lies from the beginning. But those lies, I think, are speeding up. And I think one of the things that you can do to have discernment, if you're confused right now, if you don't know, um, what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right. And I'm not saying to you, by the way, that I have everything right here. I'm, I'm, I'm speculating about some things, but I do know something's off about Damar Hamlin. I do know there's something off about these UFO stories and Chinese balloon stories. I would just say, ask God for discernment right now. And again, I'd, I'd say this, even if you aren't a Christian, get on your hands and knees and ask for God's guidance and discernment. You are swimming in lies. Let's throw that lifeline up to him and say, God, I, I, I don't know what to believe anymore. I don't know what to believe about my own life, about my own heart, about the world around me. I need your discernment. I need to put on your spiritual lens and I'm ready to have a conversation with you. Uh, if you're real, you know, if you're not a Christian, that could be a prayer. And if you are a Christian, I think we need to pray for protection over our minds right now. We're, we, the PSYOP bombardment is real. It's coming at us faster and faster. And it, it says, you know, in the end times, and I'm not saying this is the end times, it could be or could not be. I don't want to spend too much time there because we really don't know. And lots of generations thought they were in the end times. But there would be deceptions that would deceive even the elect, the Bible says. So even very, very smart people are going to be deceived. And we've seen that during COVID. We've seen the deception fool just the masses. Um, so I would just encourage you to pray for discernment today. Uh, and that is my prayer for you and for myself. And uh, don't look up is <laughs> my, uh, my advice to you. Look around, look around, look, look inside your own heart uh, and do business with God. Ask for spiritual discernment. Anyway, it was so great spending a little time with you guys today. I think I'm gonna do this more often. I'm being a little more off the cuff and just sharing thoughts as they come. Uh, there's a little risk in that, but at the same time, uh, I'm enjoying that and got some good feedback recently for doing that. So. Uh, I pray that you uh, guys are doing well and I, and I appreciate your support on our YouTube channel, on the Substack, anywhere you want to give it, but particularly on the YouTube channel because that's where I'm kind of concentrating the subscriptions. And uh, the show is coming out. We've got a bunch of stuff in the hopper, taking a little longer than I thought to edit, but I'm so excited about it. So excited about the guests we have, Mark Meckler, Jen, Jennifer Say from Levi's, uh, formerly. Laura Osnes and her husband, Nathan Johnson. And it's just been a lot of fun. And I'm so thankful to God for the opportunity, but I, I would appreciate your support in any way that you can lend it. And that's just subscribing for free. It would mean a lot to me. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great Tuesday. I will talk to you soon.